cards. Every great story starts with a game of cards. But for these young men, the stakes would be higher tonight. So does anybody actually know how to play poker? No, 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 no not really. really. Despite the change of game, the gentleman handled themselves with a native and ever-present calmness and normalcy. I'm red. Give me red. Man, whatever. I don't care. Can I be blue? Tony! In our fear, we make an image. And we call that image God. Black it is. The doors were locked, and the keys weren't on the hooks, a fact they would come to know all too well as they heard an ominous noise coming from the basement. You first read. College is wrong. Who needs college? Put me on that career path, boy. What do you mean, who needs college? Without college, you have no discernible skills. You'll end up working some minimum wage job, making nothing yearly, and next thing you know, you're 67, but with only 30,000 or 401k, looking for three more years at Walmart, and your arthritic hands give up on you. College for bank. But before the cars could even leave home, the group was distracted by an ominous noise coming from the basement. Tony, where are you headed? I want knowledge. So, college. Call it what you would like. Is it so cruelly inconceivable to grasp God with one's own senses? Let's make sure you never take any philosophy classes. <clears throat> The boys heard a loud, unmistakable, inadmissible sound that grabbed everyone's attention. Did you guys feel that? No, yeah. Sorry, my phone's ringing. One sec. Uh, guys, what the heck? Wait, that's not in the script. Are you even old enough to be drinking? What? What? Kelly just broke up with me. Through your indifference to your fellow man, you have isolated yourself from their company. How could she? I don't get it. Uh, I always had so much fun with her. Look, I hate to be a stickler here, but... Dude, be happy. Could you imagine having to inherit our college loans? Uh, video games, late nights out to sheets, thank me videos... Can we call a timeout here? I, 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 don't, I don't understand. Are, are you guys even listening? Ha! Huh. There's a killer in the basement. Mm -hmm. One of you is gonna go down there alone. What is that? We're gonna open the closet. Down, we're gonna get mutilated horribly. Down, then the killer is gonna come upstairs. He's gonna pick you off one by one until it's just one of you. Yeah. She doesn't understand who I am. She, she, she can't understand who it is to be me. Like no. Oh screw it. This isn't working. I'm changing this up. The town was quiet, like any other of its kind. The hardware store and the coffee shop, each supplying each other half of the other's customers, and every day a steady stream of cars passed through it on the way to the city without a thought. It was on a day like this that... Wait, where are you going? You can't just leave, you have a scene down here! Where the heck are you going? Do you even know where you are? Ugh. You know, maybe you should have invested more time in her. Like I should have invested more in the market. I invested plenty into her. This converse I bought her cost a ton. Do you even know what color her eyes are? Rick would have realized he had no idea, but was too surprised to turn the corner and come face to face with Mauricio, the local drug dealer. Well, well, look who it is. Huh? You try to slip out. Huh? You try to slip me like Pacquiao, huh? you know? Oh, 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 no, no. No, because you want Mauricio. Slips you some money, you slip Mauricio some money back, huh? With a little extra on the side. So where's my money, Holmes, huh? Where's my money? The boys looked around nervously at each other and reluctantly gave Mauricio- Money? Do you have any idea how much college costs? I have dreams too, okay? And you know, they always tell you to dream big, but they never tell you what the price tags those dreams come with. And you know what? That might stop some people. They might spend the rest of their lives wondering and wishing, but not me. I chose to dream. And it's hard, man. It's really hard. And I don't even know if I can do it. But this is the last thing I need. I don't need some guy who I barely even know coming here and trying to take what little I've worked so hard for. 
Jeez, dude, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I had no idea that's where you were coming oh my from. God. Yet despite Ben's convincing plea, Mauricio took his money still. Oh, come on. Don't you think he's got it hard enough already? No! Mauricio took his money! Okay. Sorry, dude. Oh, man. Oh! Sorry, dude. This heartbreaking loss caused the group to lose their appetite and... Come on, dude. Let's get something to eat. Are you freaking kidding me? You've got... Did you not... Okay. You want to play like that? The five bottomless pits of disappointment meandered their way over to the local pub, hoping they wouldn't get carded like the children they were. Rick's humble introspection, however, was too little too late, as he looked across the room and saw Ellie chatting it up with another guy, a better looking, better listening guy, I might add. Not one to be passed over by a woman, Rick strode over to the table and demanded a word with the young man. Come on, man. Let's get out of here. Oh, for the love of God. Do you even know what a script is? Oh, yeah, yeah, walk away, you cowards, walk away. You probably couldn't get a lost puppy to like you, you ignorant sack of... <sighs> okay. Okay. You know what? It's alright. We're gonna try something easy. This was a support group for men with testicular cancer. The big moosey slobbering all over me. That was Bob. It's not easy, man. I wish I could know what she was thinking. Nope. It was all the cops' fault. You don't put guys like that in a room together. Who knows what can happen? All right, step forward when you call and say the line. Number one. I want to confess the best I can, but my heart is void. Strike two. If you're part of a crew, nobody ever tells you they're going to kill you. It doesn't happen that way. There aren't any arguments or curses like in the movies. You see, your murderers come with smiles. They come as your... Friends. <laughs> oh, what the heck? Are you serious? Hey, Rick, you know who else is having relationship problems right now? Me, okay? Because nobody likes a freaking narrator anymore. They just want the characters to say the exposition like freaking freshman screenwriters. Oh, and Ben, you want to know who else has dreams? Me, okay? Yeah, I want to tell stories that touch people and move them and inspire them to be the best they can be. Uh, but no, I'm stuck here narrating some crappy student film with untrained actors, no budget, no salary, and a director that doesn't even know how to properly use an over lens. But you know what? You guys just want to spend this whole time pretentiously obsessing over your own high school issues? Then let's do that, okay? Yeah, sure. Forget my story. Forget what I want. Forget my job. Let's just drop all that and watch your pathetic lives unfold, okay? <laughs> this ought to be fun. The group of half-wit sad sack losers sat around playing a children's game when suddenly a package appeared in the hallway addressed to Rick. Atop the package, there was a letter addressed to Ben. Hey Ben, letter for you too. And what was inside the box but Rick's angry girlfriend. What's wrong with you? You are But Rick wasn't the only one in for a headache, level. as Ben opened his letter to find the first bill for college. But just when you thought things couldn't get any worse, Bradley got a text. From Ed's girlfriend. Why is Marlon texting me? She just had a question. Yeah. yeah, she wanted to know what your shirt size was. I get it! So she thinks you're bigger than me, huh? I didn't say that. Well, I'll show you who's bigger. John, you that exist somewhere, that must exist somewhere. Have mercy on us. Lifetimes of bad decisions and lack of accordance to set structures had now come to haunt these young men as they stared their biggest oh. demons straight in the eye and their demons proceeded to tear out their entrails with a hot fork knife. Never listen to me. I'll say. It's always what you want to do. Look, Reach, sister. You don't even stop to consider what it's like to be me. Oh, you can say that again. Look, it's too late for that. I'm done doing things your way. Watching your girlfriend walk away in real time is hard enough, but Rick got to experience it in four times slow-mo as Ellie made her way towards the door, her piercing words, it's too late, ringing like a lingering frequency in his ear. How would it take taken Rick this long to see his faults? How could he not have seen that his stubborn insistence on constantly being the boss was only hurting the ones he cared about? Had he opened his eyes and listened to her, he could have seen a whole new world. He could have experienced true friendship instead of living surrounded by others, yet constantly alone. 
Yet only now he realized that his obstinate focus on himself and his goals had expunged any hope of true friendship from his life. And with his last real connection severed, Rick realized the full effect of his pride, with nothing in his head but the words, It's too late. No, 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 this isn't right. I didn't want any of this to happen. I just wanted to tell my story. I just wanted to tell something beautiful, something pure, but not this. I, I didn't want this. I, I don't want this. Okay, but, but, but Ellie didn't leave. She stayed. She turned around. She gave Rick one more chance. Please, just, just give me one more chance. I promise. I promise I'll make this right. Uh, Ellie, Ellie didn't leave because, because, because the doors were locked and the keys weren't on the hooks. And at this moment, Rick noticed apology flowers on the counter and seizing the moment, grabbed them and approached Ellie. Ellie, wait. And beneath the vase of flowers was an encouraging AA card that Ben picked up on his way over for some ice. And even though Ed was trying to block Ben out, reading nothing but plain old text was slowly reassuring him. Okay, in hindsight, I may have jumped to some conclusions and overreacted to said conclusions just slightly. When don't you? And just like that, everything started to shape don't up. You think you kind of overreacted? What? Dude, did you not hear a word she just said? You're supposed to be apologizing. Wait, wait, what are you doing? Oh, no, 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 man. Oh, don't give in. Don't give in. You could do this. What about your dreams? And... Oh, come on, man. You knew she was in a relationship. Just friends, huh? Wow, you're proving my point again. No, 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 no. Oh, wait. How'd you find the... Oh, crap. Okay, uh, but then, uh, Rick got an Instagram notification that he checked. That he checked! Well, for the love of God, check your phone, man! Remember that musical? You made me do it. And I thought it was gonna be so lame. But when you made me do it, 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 it was awesome. The experience was amazing. And I never would have done it without you. What I'm trying to say is, you made me do something new. And I never do that. I, I think I'm good enough. But with you, I try new things. You showed me something new, and I want to see the world how you see it. So, do you think you can show me? Blown away by this unprecedented moment of honesty, Ellie bestowed upon Rick the most passionate, uh, hug ever received. Meanwhile, at the table, Ben went on his phone to see how much he could trade his car in when it hit him. Trade? I don't need college. I could learn a trade. Who needs alcohol? He decided to be... A blacksmith. What? Uh, those things don't even exist anymore. Ah, oh, never mind. Dresser Across two. the room, Ed was mere seconds away from putting Bradley to sleep with a lean bow and arrow choke yeah. when Brad got another text from Marla. <laughs> and Tony? Well. Let's just say this sudden turn of events gave him new perspective on the concept of divine intervention. Maybe you are up there after all. And so, with a little help, this uninspired group of damaged individuals somehow emerged from the evening as better people, in better condition, and as better friends than ever before. No more would petty arguments and selfish introspection govern their gatherings. From then on, they laughed true laughs, shared an enjoyment of all things good, and for the first time that night, all was right. <laughs>